Hey guys, it's Chris, and we're doing this a Mithlon OS 3.9 XL install, upgrade, whatever. I'm going to do a hard drive method of install, which is a little bit more lengthy and complex. Originally, I had this IDE to SS, uh, yeah, SSD, IDE to SATA converter. It took a 4-pin Berg. I had that on a SanDisk SSD, and it didn't like that too much. I kept having these weird issues where it would work, but because it doesn't support trim or anything like that, eventually it would just frag out and then wouldn't boot anymore. All right, so I'm gonna boot with the, ouch, Amiga OS XL CD in the PC. I got a bunch of cards in this machine and you know it was just a junk build for an old system that i was using so you'll see a bunch of pc crap i have an optical drive and a high point scope this is old stuff 2000 so what we're going to do is we're going to let this thing detect its drive i'm going to boot off the cd just to see what it, it does uh, it's going to load the big bird kernel this is a linux c kernel boot if you see this, you're going to be good for the most part. Now this is booting off CD, so what we need to do is use like FreeDOS or something to configure this 80 gig hard drive I got and, uh, you know, get it partitioned so I can actually install XL on the hard drive and have it boot natively without the CD and the drive. And it emulates a 68040, it hasn't got the graphics stuff yet. So here we are, base boot, 8 megs of chip RAM, 83 megs, or 863 megs of fast. You're going to see I have this Amithlon HD and like the CD drive itself where I could actually install the software. But for now, I'm not going to. I want to see if it actually sees the hard drive first. So we're going to run... HD toolbox and choose the Mithlon device and let it sniff. And I think, whoops, yeah, 80 gigs. I think that's it, but I'm not gonna install this yet because I need to boot in FreeDOS here. So I'm actually gonna burn two discs. I'm gonna burn one disc full of the patches, which I will zip up and put. And down there in the description below and that's going to contain everything you kind of need to get going on a decently modern hardware it should support it, it should support modern processors because the patches that I have it uh supposed to work but we'll see it only takes a second and what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down and uh, take the disc out and boot the free DOS and I'll show you what you got to do and I'm just going to press the reset button on the computer and we'll let it reboot. We'll let my camera get all freaky diggy because it likes to focus. I don't even know if this is clear. Can you see that? Let me back it up a tick and zoom in. Is my lens dirty? So we're going to press enter. I have to adjust my... Oh my god. Come on. Okay, so you can use your keys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, uh, I don't know, FreeDOS Live CD. It's kind of mount a CD-ROM driver for you automatically. All right, so when this is booted, we're gonna be at a CD-ROM drive or whatever. And let's see, we're gonna run XF disk press OK and then we're going to say OK XF disk uses the following options from its INI file monochrome or hide primary partitions so you can see we have our 80 gig drive here and uh, we're going to uh, press O or enter enter options and we're going to do a new partition primary partition now I don't want to use all of this why because we're gonna like remember XL is kind of an emulation so it's gonna have like a 
its own little hard drive inside. But I need to boot. So I'm just going to make something that's like 25 megabytes. Why? Because I'm going to have the kernel, uh, the boot files to load from itself so it will start up on its own without having the disk in there. Whatever. Okay. So I made a FAT16, 31 megabytes is what it made it. So now we have this other hard drive. What I'm going to do for this one is I could leave this one alone for right now, but what I need to do is do new partition, primary partition, remaining space. I'm going to do like, whoops, okay, freaked out for a second there. I don't know. 20 gigs. Nope, I don't want to make it for windows I do want to change the partition type and we're going to do other and we're going to choose partition type 76 that's the hex for Amiga done with that so we're going to press F3 to quit yes writing the partition table Now we're going to leave the free DOS CD in again. We're going to reboot now. So we're going to boot off of the free DOS CD one more time after creating our uh, our partition. Wish this could go into manual focus, but it won't. So this is free DOS. We're going to boot in just the free DOS CD ROM. My monitor's kind of doing pal. And we're going to do free DOS live CD only. So it'll boot to drive A, which is your basic DOS utility. And I'm going to do format um, C slash sys, which is going to make it bootable. Yes, you have to type the whole yes. 31 megabytes. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do copy X uh, free DOS. Whoops, I forgot the backslash. X. Free DOS, God, come on keyboard. Set up Odin uh, star dot star to C. Right? We're not going to overwrite like command com or anything because we just formatted a system partition. Can you see that clearly? So every time it says to overwrite something, just say no. It should just be on the three files, hopefully. The I and I. Kernel dot sys, no. This puts a basic DOS on the machine free. Okay, so with that done, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my uh, free DOS CD. We're leaving it running because I need the access, and we're putting in our OS 39 XL CD. I'll let that spin for a second. I need to copy the kernels to the C drive. So here's all my free DOS junk. I didn't make a directory, it's just right in the root here. So what I'm gonna do is go back to A, which is my junk DOS CD in RAM. It's a little virtual disk. I'm gonna do, uh, let me get the kernels. So X, this is the OS 3.9 CD. So I have to go into the ISO Linux directory. See ISO Linux. Alright, so here's our kernels and crap like that just to get started. Like the big bird should be in here. There's big bird and there's the small bird and a couple of the config files, the emu box, all that stuff. So what we need to do <coughs> is I have to copy all the GZs. So what I'm going to do is go A, whoops, uh, copy X. ISO Linux. All this is just to make it bootable. Uh, we'll go what? Star. Dot. G. Z. To C. That's the kernels. The big bird. Little bird. This bird. That bird. Is it running? Yeah, it's gone. So that's the big kernel. I need to do the small file. So copy. Uh, X, well, let's just do this, uh, small 
see. All right. And then I got to copy a Mythalon. Oops, that's all lowercase. All right. And I got to copy the load Linux. So, one up. L O A D L I N E X E. Yeah. Unable to open a file because I can't type. Now you can burn yourself a custom XLC with everything on it, but I'm dumb and I don't do that because I like to waste a lot of time. So I had to burn another disc, like you know, I burned FreeDOS and I could have stuck it on there, but uh, I burned another disc with two files on it, two kernels. And CDs are cheap, and I really don't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eject, give that a second to spin up. And what we're going to do is we're going to then copy the two kernels here. Let's make sure I got them. Whoops. Two kernels. All right, so they're done. So what, are the, what the heck are the files that I just did? So the small file is a text file that you're going to edit to configure booting a Mithlon. Um, it uses the small uh, GZ kernel. It has the kickstart in it. That's what the GZs are. Um, a Mithlon is another text file that configures the Linux boot part of the kernel Big Bird, I think it's called. And Big Bird um, calls Emubox, which is the actual Mithlon kernel. So, and then LaunchLin is the app that launches the Linux boot for a Mithlon. So now, what we need to do is we need to edit the small and edit the uh, a Mithlon. So we're going to do, oops, see, edit small. Here are the, we have mouse control in here too. So here are, here's the line for the kernel. It's using Emubox GZ. Um, this is like confusing as hell, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you're interested, 769 is hex for 640 by 480. It's the uh, actual uh, visa number. So 769 is 640 by 480. 771 is 800 by 600. 773 is 1024 by 768, and so on and so on. 75 and 796. So 1280 by 1024 or 16 by 12. I'm going to leave it right now at 640 by 480 because that's fine by me. Uh, what am I gonna do? Kernel K E R N three one O. Take this uh, thing out. All right. So everything else I'm leaving alone. Right. So this is the small for small bird, and of course a Mithlon will be big bird. So we're gonna do this. Save this. Close. Then we're gonna open the other text file. Now I'm just doing this so I can change my kernel and start up the kernel the newer kernel. So this will be uh, KRN310 that we just copied to the C. I'm going to say save. And now we're going to say exit. Let me remove my kernel CD. So I'm done that part. That's the boot part. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is going to boot the Amith, jeez. This is going to boot the Amithlon kernel. I'm not putting my CD in yet. So let's reboot. It's going to reboot the Amithlon kernel on kernel 3.1.0. And uh, what we'll do is we're going to load Amithlon once it gets done manually. We'll do that load lin command. Now, we don't have to do this at the end. This is just for me setting this up off the hard drive. And this is a lot of freaking work. So this is just for install. Remember, all this work is just to get it booting off of its own hard drive. It's going to give me some funky errors or whatever about, I don't care. It's just to get me to boot. Disregard all my crappy messages and junk. Okay. I'm not worried about this. Whatever. Bypassing whatever. Okay. L-O-A-D-L-I-N-A-M-I-T-H-L-O-N. If I could type it correctly. So it's going to do my init. I should see my bouncing ball. Maybe. There's my bouncing ball. And two of them. Remember my, when I said 640 by 480? So. Now what's gonna happen is we'll get my Amithlon booted. There's no CDs in the drive and it's doing 
nothing. Board's taking its forever time. That'd be a good screensaver. Okay, so there's no disc in the drive. My CD is right here. The OS 39 XL. Now, you'll notice I don't have my CD icon there. Let me take this damn backdrop off and turn auto on this monitor, get it get her centered here. All right, so I have eight megs of chip, 869 megs of fast. I could actually run like this, but I need to now partition my hard drive for my workbench. Because this is like the basic 390 XL kind of core. Like what's just on nothing. I could boot off of this, make a batch, auto exec that bat to load that, and be done. But that's not really what we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a Mithlon HD, we're going to go into tools, and we're going to go into HD toolbox. And I have a pet peeve where I like to close all of my windows behind it for some reason, because I was always saving chip RAM. But I guess with 8 megs of emulated chip RAM, I don't need that. So you can see I have all these CD-ROM device, floppy device, second, uh, a Mithlon device, a myth, second a Mithlon, and third a Mithlon. We're going to choose this one. Say OK. I just said install, because I'm stupid. 2, 2, 2, and 2. Let's delete this. Let's delete this. Let's delete. Let's leave that. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to just... That's great. Reboot. I like how it reboots really fast. Do I have two drives now or to just nuke everything? Okay. Much better. All right, we're going to format these like a normal Amiga. Format disk. I'm going to call this one. Let's see if Control X works. Nope, it does not. Uh, system. Take that dang trash can out here. Quick format. Rock on. Do it. This is an actual physical hard drive, but work. Okay. No trash can. Format. Format. I could do larger drives, but this is just for you know, testing purposes only. So, I have a hard drive that boots, right? Cool. We need to install OS 3.9. So we're gonna put our Amithlon CD in, our OS 3.9 XL. I get tired of calling it Amithlon. And we'll see the CD icon boot up here, the little disc dude. So here's our CD. We're gonna choose, this is the virtual image, which won't be there in a little while. So we're gonna run the 3.9 uh, install. And the reason I chose not to make these bootable in HD Toolbox when I first did this is because if I needed to reboot the Amiga, these are going to have a higher boot priority than that little image I did, so I would have been stuck in a non-bootable DHO endless shell of where. To, what do I do now? I will check off the make bootable after I'm done this using 3.9's toolbox, HD Toolbox. So we're going to go ahead and blast through the 39 XL install. We're going to say use RAM because it's so much faster after it unpacks the six or seven megs of data it needs. My CD-ROM drive is currently going crazy, reading something. Can I see some RAM going down? With almost a gig of RAM, I'm not really worried about it. So we're going to let this roll through its thing. Oh, turd. So this has Boing Bag 1 and Amiga OS XL software. Great. We'll do internet and crap later. Proceed. Yep. Great. I'm going to just minimize this crap because it likes to throw commercials up. I accept. Install for real. Oh, man. We're going to install it on VDH0 system. Proceed. English like Jesus spoke. No printers. None of that. American like it should be. And uh, backdrops. This thing's rolling. It'll only take literally a second or so. <laughs> surf the internet. Look at this cheap surf. What was that? Oh, send off your registration. We're done. Proceed. Now we have to reboot. But remember, I have to run this Amithlon HD Tools HD Toolbox go into my Mithlon device and I have to make that little guy hey Doug uh, bootable. Pitching and save.
and exit. All right, so that should do it. We're still going to see this uh, Amithlon HD when we reboot. Print screen R, control, print screen R. Okay, control, then print screen, then R. Woo! So it's going to reboot quickly. This is now booting off of my OS 3.9 Get Boing XL in a little bit less of a resolution. When we boot the Amiga, I can still do the load lin, but it rebooted, it's still using the initial init from load lin. So a Mithlon is working, hard drive is partitioned. See, we're still seeing this, and my CD's in. Get the CD out. All right, so now, remember how we had two, we had two, uh, when I booted a Mithlon, that puts this up here. So that's like my emergency boot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, reboot the machine, like a full reboot. Boom. Can I boot it? Okay, boom. So we're rebooting it. I just press the reset button on the front of the guy right here. And then we'll start adding some more peripherals back in. And so when we did the load lin at Amithlon, that puts that Amithlon emergency disk. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do load lin at small. Whoop. This is still using kernel 3.1.0. This will load just my hard drive. Not the Amithlon CD, not the Amithlon underscore HD. I wish I could fix this. I will get this sorted out. We're going to play with those VGA boot options in a second. So this gets a PC on Amithlon. There's my, just my hard drives, Amiga OS. Oops, that's DH1. You get out of there. Go over here. Amiga OS 3.9 XL. Isn't that cool? We have to put some patches on this sucker. There is a uh, Boing Bag 2 or 3 or something like that. Um, I have to burn all these to disk and get them over here and get like a directory opus or directory works or something on here that I can use, but I want to test one thing. So storage DOS drivers, <coughs> PC0, is going to go into devs DOS drivers. Is it in here already? Omega XL, CD0, Mithlon, CD0. Okay, never mind, hold on. I'm going to try that. And I'm going to try that, because I have two drives. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? I don't know. Is it going to be high density? Because I'm a PC high density disc. I don't know. Let's, uh, what is this one? Here's my re-kick disc. I'm going to put this, is that a ghost disc in there? Let's, uh, put that drive in. Problem is, is, see, PC discs don't do anything when you spin them up. You put a disc in, they're dumb. They don't, they don't have a, track sense. Well, Wait a minute. Hey Chris, this is Chris from the future. Uh, you got all this crap sorted. The floppy drives do work. If you miss it, you'll just see the PC0 on it. I also have sound and USB working natively, but we'll let previous Chris finish this and my goodies will be for part two. But check this out. So I'm I have a disc in the drive. A Mithlon booted. The hotkey is just print screen and R to reboot. It will read the floppy disk on startup. Floppy disk is reading. It is rebooting. It is up. Now you will see the cross DOS logo, and these are the files from my ghost disk that I had on PC. It is 1.44 megabyte or drive. It is 1.2 in use. So this is a 1.44 meg PC drive. If I format this, it will be readable on any Amiga with cross DOS, AKA PC zero. But that's that. It does work. Back to you, Chris from the past. I don't know. Let's see. PC zero. Long video, apologies in advance.
I try to keep them 10 to 20 minutes, but sometimes things just happen. All right, there's my CD. Here's my thing. So we're going to go into RAM because I have a boatload of it, apparently. And I will configure directory opus to be and do all of its things. So I need to what? Did director opus. I got driver. I had to do drivers. So bug fix update one. Bing. We're going to do update. I don't know if it's going to be called the same thing. So we're going to do a Mithlon update. All right. So it says the Mithlon, this installation requires a new Mithlon kernel provided by Bernd Meyer. There shouldn't be any problems with the old kernel, but Contrib 3B network and audio as well as MS-DOS support are only available with the new kernel. You asked a lot of questions. You, have to, you might not be able to answer. Choose the left option. Is this a Pentium 4 system? Nope. MS-DOS support is not working with the initial release of Mithlon. If you're using small bird, if you are using a fixed small, no I'm not, no I'm not, sure. The Zip and LS120 drives are not, okay, whatever. Uh, patch, parallel port, whatever. Yep, yep, sounds good. Go for it, done. Cool. Print screen R. Or did I blow up? There's Picasso 96. Ooh hoo hoo. Nice. Nice. Still working. Update 131. Okay. Fine. Proceed. Quit. You. Daddy. It's really fast. Control, print screen R. Let's get some USB stuff. Uh, Poseidon 44. I don't know what this is. We'll see what this is. Poseidon V3. What's this one? Poseidon V4. Which one should I use? I don't know. Stir. I don't have any of these. Sounds good. USB class, uh, whatever. Sounds great. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yep. Proceed. Should have just said auto. Uh, yep. 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 Uh, whatever. Okay. Done. Did that just say install something to RAM? Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we get USB. Uh, control, print screen, R. This is a long video. Perhaps. I wonder if I can do warp OS. <laughs> Probably not. Try that with a weird face. Guess what I forgot to freaking copy to my CD. I'm tired of burning all these CDs. I guess I could throw everything I got on a CD and toss it at this thing. But that is Amiga OS 3.9 XL running on a PC with a Intel processor. I'm gonna like I said before I'm gonna try this on another one, but eight eight megs a chip 874 fast. It's pretty daggone quick for what it is considering this is a Pentium 3 and it's emulating uh, I'm gonna get Picasso 96 installed even though it looks pretty good right now and uh, Get the USB all set up try to figure out networking get all these patches on I have the uh, appropriate cards and everything that is required for a Mithlon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll provide links in the description down below for everything that I found and maybe you can get yourself one of these rolling. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll learn something.